Hi, my name is Chris Gamble, and I'm the head of developer relations and hardware here at Goliath. And today we're announcing that we're open sourcing some of the hardware that we use on our reference designs. Our reference designs are end-to-end -end demos that actually show you how to implement an IoT device in the real world using Goliath capabilities, using our open source firmware, and now our open source hardware. So first off, let's see what this looks like. Uh, this One of these boards is uh, this one. We'll take a look at a little bit more detail on the screen in a second. But this is just the bare board. And then we usually, on what we call the Alia Dell platform, we stick it into cases like this. And what you may have noticed is actually there's some headers here that make it easy to plug in different boards. And these are uh, these are called microbus click header boards, or click boards, rather. Those make it so that you can swap out for different functionalities. Then we also put a customizable front panel on here. This is actually a PCB front panel. This is an e-ink uh, with backlit LEDs and some touch touch implementations on there as well. And that all closes up to be the Aliadel device, uh, Aliadel platform with uh, different devices targeting different verticals. If you've never seen our reference designs before, we can take a look at that real quick. Uh, so these are the different reference designs that we have available. Uh, each of these is well-documented. We have entire guides for how you can go and recreate this and including not just uh, recreating it using this custom hardware. Up until this point, it was not really possible to, to make what we were making and showing. We were doing it from a demonstration purposes. Instead, we had what we called follow along hardware. And this is taking the same click boards and plugging them into a converter uh, from the click to the Uno shield that then plugged into off the shelf development kits like the ones from Nordic Semiconductor. And then a lot of the same firmware went and targeted that sort of thing. So today what you can do is you can go and actually start to build this hardware yourself. We still don't sell it and there's really no plans to do that, but you could either go build it yourself for one-off type of things, or you could go and use it as a basis for your product. Now what you're seeing here is actually previous versions of this, this uh, baseboard down here in this image. Uh, this is the same kind of physical layout with clickboards plugging in and the underlying uh, board there though is actually a set of dev boards kind of uh, soldered together in a Lego format. And so that we were using an off the shelf feather format board that then talked to click headers with some battery interfaces, not really much happening there. We took that and we said we wanted to customize it. We wanted to kind of enhance it with other capabilities. And that's what we're gonna show you here in a second. And then on the, on the right side here, you see the Astentis. The Astentis is that faceplate, and it still does use the Pipeco. That was a decision made during the uh, part shortages of 22, 23. And that has actually proven to be very interesting uh, from a platform perspective to make it easy to go and uh, change things as well. Let's take a look at what these boards actually look like. So uh, first things first, you'll notice in the top right, there is a lot of super glue on this one, uh, this particular unit that I had here uh, for photographing. This is, uh, this is a step that I do myself and that's why the super glue is, is prominent there. But ultimately uh, it's, it's possible to uh, make this yourself. Uh, and on the left side here, you see this all lit up with the backlit LEDs here. The LEDs are actually downward firing. They're firing down through the PCB itself. And then the PCB material is uh, actually diffusing it. And it's got that nice soft glow there. You can kind of see these outside buttons as well. You see those going around the top. There's three different buttons that are touch buttons and that allows navigation. You can see this in some of the videos that we do as part of the reference designs. A little bit more complex, uh, sorry, last thing on this though, is there is a, um, a header that goes down to the, the quick or stemma headers here. And uh, that is just a cabled version of I squared C down and three, 3 3.3 volts that goes from this connector here up to what I thought was a connector here. I apparently ripped off this one. Uh, I'm not realizing this photo, but uh, this is the location for that one as well. Uh, the board, so the top board here is the Ostentis. Ostentis is Latin for display, so you know, pretty on the nose there. Uh, the bottom one here is the Aliadel Elixir. A lot of our naming comes from the world of alchemy because uh, we think about magic in a box, and that's what uh, a lot of this has been happening for us. Uh, and so this one's the Elixir. This one is a uh, NRF9160, which is a cellular modem. It does run Zephyr, as you can see in our open source uh, in our open source firmware that targets this. We also have an ESP32 module on here running ESPAT firmware, sorry, ESP32C3. So the lower cost RISC-V based version. And that is connected over UART to the, to the cellular module here. And that's for both getting uh, Wi-Fi access points that might be in your area for locationing, but also to be an offload for the cellular. If cellular isn't available for some reason, you can always switch over to Wi-Fi connection as well. We also have things like uh, 48 volt input, up to 48 volt input for industrial power supplies that might be there, boost for 
powering the click the uh, click boards that might be plugged in because that actually does have five volts there. We can actually go and turn off all of the parts that are in this region here, if you can see my mouse. Uh, and that's because we want it in low power mode. We want it to actually be able to shut down all of this stuff so that all of the peripherals are also shut down. So that's controllable from the NRF9160. Serial interfacing, some low, uh, low quiescent current powering here, and then also charging batteries, uh, batteries here. So both tracking the f with the fuel gauge, but then also the actual charger chip here. So all that stuff kind of comes together. You'll see up top, we also have a programming header uh, here. We have a secondary programming header over here on the top side. Top side uses this tag connect uh, connector. And we also have it so that, uh, so you could plug in when it's inside the box. One of the theses for this design is that we wanted to make it so that you could have the cutouts in the Aliodel case, but also it could just go into a watertight case as well. So you wanna make sure it's accessible uh, with the one header being kind of on the bottom down here. You wanna make sure you can still access it. So we have the tag connect here for doing that sort of thing. Battery connectors, buttons that do reset, user button, user control and modes for booting. We have SIM connectors and a footprint for an eSIM. We have a buzzer. We have these quick connectors I talked about, and then up here is the power. Um, so all that together makes it so that you can go and basically this is a you know a fully featured cellular and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and GPS device here. So it really uh, has a lot of a lot of stuff going for it. But I'd say the thing that actually has the most going for it is the fact that you can go and you can go start accessing some of this. Uh, accessing the underlying code that actually powers all this stuff. So each of these repositories, so this is the CAN Asset Tracker repository. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, where is the repository? I, I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> uh, I should, yes, there it is. Okay, there's a repository. Um, and so this is all already open source. This is already open, open source. We actually have binaries that you can go and download for the, uh, either the follow along hardware or now the Aliadel versions. So you can go and do that sort of thing. And then you're kind of off to the races. So if you build your own hardware using our open source hardware designs, you could go and load it up with a pre-configured firmware there, or you can do the same on off the shelf hardware and then target the custom hardware later. In terms of this uh, repo, it's not public at the time of this recording, but it of course is at the time of release. And uh, all of the stuff is in here as well. Some more explanation and background and some pretty pictures uh, and how to actually go and use it as well. You'll see some other information kind of, we've leaked out some of this stuff over time as we've built, built this hardware for our own needs. Obviously the hardware itself has been showcased at many of the tr trade shows that we do. And uh, you've seen, you've been able to see this on the projects.galat.io, which is our reference design page there. Uh, same thing for the Abstentis. You can go and see how we did all this stuff, what's involved, all the hardware files are all now downloadable. And in terms of the license, this is licensed under CERN OHL-P. That's the permissive, permissive open hardware license. Uh, there are also a couple of uh, uh, helper libraries specifically for the Abstentis. So if you see, um, if I go back to that image real quick, you see here, this is powered by the Pico here, which is the RP2040. And so we actually have a micro Python image that can load onto here that you can plug in with the USB and then also uh, directly control it, change some of the imagery uh, on the e-ink screen as well. And so we have an image that goes onto the RP2040. And then we also have a library that goes on the NRF9160 that talks over I squared C out this connector here up to the Ostentus. And so that you're able in your, your Zephyr programs, or if you wanted to port it yourself to other program, other uh, RTOSs, you could do that, but basically just an I squared C command that is, uh, you know, basically adding slides to this front panel here. So this is a temperature slide, and you can do the same for other readings. So it's easy to abstract out your different readings there and try a lot of different things. And so that is this lib of Stentis as well. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about all of this stuff. This is what we use internally, and we're really excited that it's now out in the world. You can go and use it on your designs. You can see it in the wild. You can see it at trade shows. This is something you're going to continue to see from Goliath, and we think it's a great basis for a lot of your products. So this is something we're really excited about. We think will enable a lot of the designs both internally at Goliath and hopefully for a lot of you as well. We think we talk about the 80% done version of hardware here. This is not a uh, saleable design. We don't sell this currently. We don't have any plans to, uh, but you could take it as a reference and build out your hardware around it. You can shrink it as you need to. We're actually doing some hardware experiments. We're also shrinking it down for newer part types as well. Uh, and we're trying, you know, putting this on the same, on, on 
on to new capabilities and, and new applications in a smaller form factor as well. But for a lot of industrial form factors, this fits the bill really well. And we think a lot of the capabilities that are already in there can serve a lot of needs. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear about how you're using this in your designs, how it's inspiring your next IoT product and what you might wanna see in future stuff from us. So that's all for now. Uh, please hit us up over on the forum if you have any thoughts. Thanks for watching.